I was watching this video. Um, the the main point of this video really is, um, you know, introducing uh, you to uh, Salah. So I'm assuming that uh, if you will get through uh, the whole video, you are very, 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 very new to Salah. Um, but if you know Silab, therefore uh, I don't think uh, you need to go through this uh, this video at all. Um, I will basically explain, you know, uh, the screen right here, some of the things that you know uh, you you might be aware of. Some of them are pointless; you will never use them ever. Uh, programming with Silab, um, but uh, you know, let's let's get into it. So Scilab is basically uh, a programming language, right? Uh, it's a, it's a numerical language to say. So it uses numbers. Um, it's similar to MATLAB. So you can you if you have MATLAB, you can use MATLAB. Uh, but Scilab is free online. You can download it online. All you have to do basically is Google Scilab and. Uh, I'm sure it will uh, lead you to uh, the Scilab website where you can get this uh, programming software. Uh, it has powerful solvers. Um, that's why, you know, why waste money on, 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 on MATLAB if you have Scilab. And it, it performs, uh, you know, basic computation uh, that you can perform using MATLAB. Uh, you can, it can get as complicated as it can be. No, uh, but okay. So here, basically, after you open Scilab, you're gonna see the screen right here. Uh, this windows uh, from my cursor is 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 pointy. Those ones are are basically they can be anywhere, but it is self-explanatory. You have a variable browser here, and you have a command history. Variable browser is where you know all your variables are going to show uh, as you go on uh, programming or going through your, your, your uh, you know your code. Uh, command history records everything you have done, um, so you will see how command history works in this basic uh, you know tutorial. You can expand it. You know, using these small arrows here, I'm sure you're familiar with them. Uh, depending on how you like your visuals, um, and this guy right here is is your file, your file uh, uh, browser. Uh, basically, it, it it tells you, it has like it shows the file that are in your current directory. So. Uh, in my current directory, I have this files, introduction, matrices, whatever. Uh, they are in my current directory. And uh, here you have a console. Console is where executions happen. So uh, when you run your code, uh, it will show up here. And the results are going to pop up. If you're drawing graphs, there will be some, uh, you know, browsers that will show. And here is uh, your, your, then your, your, where you write your, your code. Uh, this is where you're going to write your code. Is so this guy right here. Is your script file basically? If you are familiar with other programming language like Python and all that, your script file or your project, sometimes they call them project, that's what you are going to save. In, in, that's what you're going to save uh, after writing code. Uh, so you will want to reuse uh, whatever code you, you know, you programmed uh, later on, right? So in order for you to not to write your code over and over again, uh, it, it is best to save it. It is best to save it somewhere, right? 
Okay, let's get to it. So, Scilab, uh, Scilab um, works like your calculator. Uh, okay, let me just clear my console here. Uh, it, it works like a calculator. So, you can add numbers, divide numbers, multiply numbers, uh, you know, introduce uh, the power. So, when you add a 1 plus 1, that's what shows up. 1 plus 1, we all know is 2, right? And uh, your Scilab stores uh, the results in variable answer. So, variable answer then shows up here in your variable uh, browser, you see. So, every variable you declare in your console will show up here. In this variable browser that's what i meant earlier on and in your command history this is what happened i wrote clc uh, and i wrote one plus one so it recorded in my command history you'll probably never use um, these two uh, guys right here so a uh, uh, variable answer is uh it's 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 a it's a, it's a default uh, variable for Scilab if you did not give your variable a name it is going to assign it to answer but you can give a, a, a variable uh, you can store uh, you know numbers in your variables so for example if I say a is equal to 5 my a is a, is a, is a variable so I'm assigning 5 to a uh, it will show here in the variable browser where a is equals to 5 it shows in a command history that I declared a as 5 so if I uh, counter when I call a in my console it's going to give me 5 so when I say a plus a it's going to give me 10 but it will assign it to a new variable answer again what Scilab usually does is it works in a are like a top-down fashion or uh, you know, chronological order so if I assign a new value to a and I say a is equal to 8 uh, it will cancel it will take a will take the value of uh, you know that the last uh, number I, I declared it as so uh, my a in this case will no longer be 5 so if I say a plus a again, it will give me 16 now. Uh, so that's what happens. And check out what happens or what's going on in a variable again in a command history. It records exactly what I've done here in in a, in a console, right? Um, this guy right here is basically uh, your thing, your your thing what I've explained earlier on if you want to change your current your, your current directory you can press that small blue folder and move around basically so if I want to make this my current directory I'll just press open here but I don't want to change my current directory now uh, if you want to get uh, what your current directory is when you don't know it you simply uh, um, you know small capital letter PWD and it gives you your current directory that's a long as current directory right there but yeah yeah that's what that's what um, happens so if you want to uh, uh, open a new script uh, you will have this folder right here if you just say new it will give you a new uh, um, uh, script where you can uh, name it whatever you want and name it like let me do uh, whatever I did earlier on D is equals to uh, 10 and uh, the results of A plus B I'm storing them in C and uh, I run this to run a script you can press this uh, play button here uh, or you can press um, F5. F5. So 
I will store this um, as um, XCD and uh, it ran my code, right? So if I press C, it's going to show me the results uh, I wanted. It's going to show me the result of a recently executed file. So, um, or an executed script. My B, B enter, it will show up, whatever. So, uh, this is just a basic, 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 basic form of, 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 of Scilab programming. And it, it works exactly like a computer. So, let me say, if I want powers, I can say a double star uh, two, so a times a, it should be twenty five, right? And uh, you can also get the same thing by uh, using uh, this cap button right here. It is going to give us the same result f five, and then c d is twenty five, and e is twenty five. So they are the same. They are the same, um, you know, uh, function. They perform the same uh, functions. You can divide. To divide, you will use, let me say, um, B divided by A. You use a uh, backslash. Uh, so, Tyler basically uses matrices. All these numbers, although you can, they are all single numbers. Uh, Scilab records them as a one by one matrix. You will see maybe later on, as time goes on, how Scilab uh, actually solve um, uh, this kind of a, uh, this kind of a, uh, of, 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 of a deal. So uh, let's show F. F is two and G should be zero point five. So that's it. So when you use this guy right here, basically it's one of the most powerful tools ever. Uh, it, it, it gives you an inverse um, uh, of of the matrix. You will see later on. Um, so, but in this case, it works the same way as P over A, right? Yeah. But those are just basics. I created this folder right here. Uh, I wanted to go through it with you, uh, with you to see how uh, basic control works. So we've worked with this. Um, we've showed you this. We've showed you this guy right here. This guy will be 25 plus 2, right? So if I highlight that and I say Control E, it gives me 27. It's 25 plus 2. Uh, this. It's, just, it's basically what we have done now. Uh, and if I run this guy, all of these guys right here, uh, the answer, the default answer, will be the latest. Uh, will be the latest variable I've declared. As you can see in this case, the answer is forty twenty five. Uh, we have other defined like uh, you know. Uh, Functions uh, Scilab uh, that are embedded in Scilab. So uh, you will, I'm sure you know basic functions like our square root and, and cos function and sine function. Uh, those are fine. Uh, uh, I define uh, are, are functions that Scilab already has, so you can simply use them directly. Uh, I've decided to show them in this color. This color, you can change uh, the colors that you want. Uh, you can even change the color of your console if you want. And in order for you to do that, you simply go to this uh, in the toolbox right here. You... No, no, not a toolbox. Uh, there should be a cell. I have preference somewhere here. Uh, yes, there. Where? 
okay yeah in options there is a preferences there you can go to sign up general set oh yeah even the toolbox uh, will 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 get you here uh, if you want to change the car uh, again the console you can go here colors um change whatever you want um if you want in the default functions to have a specific color you can uh, use this if you want a different font you go there change your font yeah press g and you change your stuff um, and apply it cancel it's a uh, it's, it's is that but I don't in order for you to in order for you to see uh, if you want if you want uh, again, if you want your results to display after you run a script uh, you can use this display function display function let's say I want to show uh, the results of C I will say display C after you run it um, can I put CLC here? CLC basically clears yeah, the console, just like yeah. So whatever returns here is uh, the result of C. I can put G. Um, I can put G as well next to C. It will show me two values: uh, the result of C and the result of T. Um, I believe. I've covered most uh, parts that you might need for you to um, to get going with with, with salad. You just have to be familiar with 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 uh, some of the uh, you know the controls you can, some of the, uh, the the functions around here. Uh, I've basically covered numbers, integers, and whatever. But you can also you can also um, uh, declare strings. Uh, basically, to declare string, you have to use code. Um, K is equals to hello world. Hello world. If I want to see K, and I just type K in my console shows hello world and you can also try to show okay around here um nah, not really um you will have to declare some string there sorry about that but i will i will cover that in, in, in some of the next videos but i think um i will try to wrap it up here but let me see what what did i miss Ah, uh, Yeah, okay. Uh, some of this stuff you will learn as you go on. If you want to change the current directory, you can just type cd and uh, put your directory in, 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 in between. But like uh, the easier way is to just uh, press uh, that that right there, okay? I'll stop there here.